Hey everyone, this is Chad Morris with a new review video, and uh, today I'm going to be reviewing my workhorse guitar. This is my baby. Uh, this is the guitar that gives me my current sound, the Cordoba Orchestra CE. This is an acoustic electric nylon, and uh, this is actually my favorite guitar at the moment, uh, since I transitioned from uh, electric guitar to acoustic electric in 2015. So I got this guitar from McCabe's Guitar Shop in Santa Monica, California. And uh, I think it was during my second year at music school. And I'd been going up to the store to play it and just, you know, when I couldn't afford it, I would just go up there and play it and just hope somebody didn't come and, and buy it. <laughs> so on the day that I was finally able to afford the guitar, um, as soon as I was uh, ringing it up and the tech was restringing it, a guy came up next to me and was like, man, I, wanted, I, I really wanted that guitar. I was gonna get that guitar. And I was like, oh man, Yo, sorry, man, but I have my eye on this guitar for a long time now. <laughs> but anyway, let me get into the review and let's start with the specs. So just some quick specs before I get into the, uh, the tone of this guitar. Uh, the CE body is a, is a classical style, though I wouldn't call it a classical guitar. It's obviously a crossover guitar, uh, but it has a single cutaway, uh, either Canadian cedar or European spruce. In either case, the back and sides of the guitar are Indian rosewood. Along with a Spanish fan bracing pattern and a high gloss polyurethane body finish, uh, this guitar has a fusion style neck with an ebony fingerboard. The guitar is quite well made and it is a looker. In fact, I like to think of my guitar as a female. Uh, all my other guitars are clearly males. Uh, but I haven't come across this color combination, especially this headstock, um, when I see other people's uh, orchestra CEs. So yeah, obviously female. The width at the nut is 1.87 inches, uh, that's 48 millimeters, and the scale length is 25.6 inches. This is the Fusion Series neck, uh, which is a true crossover neck. It isn't as wide as a traditional classical, uh, but it's nowhere near being too cramped to play chords uh, with wider intervalic spacings. It's really right in the middle, which makes it an unusually fast neck for a nylon guitar. This neck is actually one of my favorite things about this guitar, uh, because it's very fast and it's very comfortable. Now as for the electronics, uh, which I will get into in depth a little bit later, uh, there is a side-mounted equalizer uh, with a phase button for feedback cancellation, a mic to piezo blend, and a notch filter. There's also an onboard tuner, uh, which I rarely use anymore. Um, you can see that it's, it's showing that it's out of tune, and that's because I usually play this guitar in 432 hertz. It's still super convenient to have an onboard tuner. Both the saddle and nut are made of bone, and the tuning machine heads are the Cordoba Silvers. There's a two-way adjustable truss rod that I haven't really messed with at all. The guitar seemed pretty well set up uh, when I bought it, especially for being used. However, there was a problem with the input at the bottom of the guitar. For some reason, uh, the washer inside was put on backwards, and it frequently loosened. Sometimes it loosened so badly that the input actually fell out of the back of the guitar. Mr. Neely at Neely Guitars in Hollywood uh, he's the tech that I take most of my guitars to. He fixed this problem in literally 30 seconds. So I'm glad it wasn't really a, a serious issue. These guitars usually come new with Savare's hard tension strings. 
but later I'm going to show you why I don't exactly agree with these strings for this guitar, uh, with some examples later in this video. Next I want to talk about some of the guitar's tonal quirks. Uh, let's talk about the tone in the electronics. So here's an interesting thing about this guitar. Uh, to get the bigger, thicker sound that I want, I actually have to play the cheaper hard tension strings. So I play the Diodario uh, Pro Arte hard tensions. Uh, they're a cheaper string, but they provide a thickness to the tone uh, that I, I really need. They're less expressive and less responsive uh, than the more expensive classical strings. But man, I'd rather sacrifice a little bit of expressiveness uh, for a bigger tone. In my last year in music school, I had the fortune of taking my rep classes with the classical guys. This class was headed by my favorite guitar teacher uh, there, Matt Greif. And in these rep classes, I got insight into getting the best tone out of uh, nylon string guitars. Uh, everything from technique, strings, nails, to like footstools. So I heard Savarez strings uh, recommended by Matt. Uh, which happen to be the strings that actually come on the guitar when it's new. So I decided to pick some up and see how they sound. So I bought some, uh, hard tensions, about $20. And yo, they literally made my guitar sound like a lute or a harp or something. I don't know if it was just my guitar or maybe I was just so used to the strings I was playing. Uh, but these more expensive classical strings, it, they actually seem to expose the smaller size of this body and the body's tendencies to attenuate mids and high mids. At the end of the day, this guitar does have a hole in it uh, where the side-mounted electronics are. Though it's covered up, uh, it creates a, a tonal deficiency, in my opinion. Uh, sound reverberating off of hard plastic uh, yields attenuated high mids. You can hear this. Sound reverberating off of only wood uh, yields a rounder tone. Now I also have a Yamaha acoustic electric nylon uh, that I played on some of my older recordings like Latin Soul and it's built in much the same fashion as this guitar. But I always wondered about a different way of constructing these guitars. What if the guitar was made with thicker sides uh, so that the body's cavity could remain contiguous with no hole and the electronics could be mounted in these thicker sides. The wiring for the mic and the pickup uh, could run through a cavity in these sides and you can still have a body cavity with no hole uh, where the side mounted electronics would usually be. I feel like this would give you a better sound. Uh, if there's a guitar like this let me know uh, because I feel like that would be something cool to have but it would probably be a nightmare to work on. So here's a song I did with those same exact Savarez strings. They sound good, 
I'm not saying they don't sound good. And they were super expressive. Like every string was alive. Uh, but there was no meat to the tone for me. And, and that's my sound. Uh, this is something that EQ just can't save, uh, having a thickness to your tone. But I still like these uh, strings enough to record a couple of songs with them. Because the body is smaller than a traditional classical guitar, uh, in my opinion, it doesn't do that well accepting the, the more elite quality strings. So after recording like two songs with those strings, I took them off and uh, put back my Pro Arte uh, Diodario Hard Tensions. I just prefer these cheaper strings. They make the guitar sound really good. Here's an example of a recording with the Pro Artes. Now I just want to quickly talk about the tone under nail versus under a pick. So my instructor at the time, Matt Greif, who's a very well-versed classical and jazz guitarist, uh, he plays under a natural nail, and uh, one day he asked me if he could try the guitar out. And the sound coming out of the guitar was just terrible. <laughs> we were both like, "Yeah," But he said, man, it sounds good when you play it. And I think this is because I use a very hard 2mm pick with a soft to medium pick attack. The guitar sounds great under a thick pick. Uh, I, however, uh, played the guitar under long nails uh, for some recordings back in the past, but only for rhythm parts, and that worked out pretty well. But as for lead, you're going to be doing a little bit of EQing because it brings out kind of a harsh tone when you, when you dig into it. So a traditional classical finger style doesn't sound that great to me. Uh, it's just my opinion. Again, I always tell people this is not a classical guitar. As for the electronics, this mic pre here, it should never be maxed out. Uh, it should be rolled back a little bit to encourage a sweeter tone. The side mounted electronics run on a regular 9 volt battery, and these electronics will handle uh, different batteries in different ways. When the battery gets low, uh, a red light indicator is displayed above the tuner. And when you have a low battery, especially if you're using a cheap battery, uh, the tone is really affected. It completely changes for the worst. You get a weaker tone with a lot of harshness. So it's good to keep fresh designer brand batteries. It actually affects your tone. Now you don't have to go Eric Johnson on your attention to detail with the battery manufacturers and what country they're made in. <laughs> but it's good to use some proper batteries for this guitar. Also, leaving the guitar plugged in will drain the battery. I had to learn that the hard way. As I said earlier, the onboard tuner is great. This phase button is great for feedback cancellation when you're playing really loud. But it does, of course, uh, sacrifice a little bit of tone. And finally, the mic blend knob. Uh, let me play some examples of the two extreme settings on this mic blend knob. This knob blends signal between the piezo pickup and the onboard mic. Here's the mic at full. This is turned all the way to the right.
Here's the blend at full pickup, turned all the way to the left. Sounds kind of cool. When you play with the pickup, you're probably going to need this notch filter, and maybe a little bit of EQ too. The piezo really brings out a lot of soupy lows uh, that need to be handled properly. Turning the notch knob to the right will back the lows off the signal uh, without you needing to really touch the EQ. This is great for playing live when you may get a boomy sound. Turning the notch filter to the left will actually open up some of your lows. This is better for recording. We were always taught to uh, get all your frequencies recorded and you can EQ and compress them later. You can find this guitar anywhere from $560 used to $800 new and any price in between. It depends on the condition of the guitar. Now if you're going used, uh, be sure to really, really check the thing out. Make sure all the electronics, the mic, the pickup, the preamp, the onboard stuff, all of that stuff is working. And also check that input at the bottom of the guitar. That's where I made my mistake, but luckily it wasn't a costly one. In conclusion, I have to give my workhorse an 8 out of 10. This guitar works really well at home or small studios uh, where you don't really have the expensive mics needed to professionally mic an acoustic nylon guitar. In engineering school, we were taught to mic an acoustic guitar with three mics. One mic at the nut, actually maybe a condenser or something, to catch some of the sparkly things coming off the top of the neck, uh, one at the bridge to catch the meat, and a mic at the 12th fret uh, to catch what's coming out of the sound hole, as well as some of the harmonics uh, coming off of that 12th fret. Now I bet this guitar would sound amazing when mic'd in that fashion, but honestly it does really well on its own. Uh, with its own acoustic electric capabilities. One day though, I will sacrifice having electric acoustic capabilities and sacrifice the cutaway for a proper handmade classical guitar. Hopefully made by some old man living in a cottage in Portugal or Spain uh, whose life is just making guitars. That would be nice. But anyway, this concludes my review of the Cordoba Orchestra CE. And thanks for watching.